Hi, it's Mr. Shrum, and I'm going to walk through the project-based learning activity about asthma awareness. Part of this activity talks about the position of a community health educator, and these health educators uh, share health information with the community. So it can have a really big impact on the health of the people in a certain uh, region. And in this activity, we're gonna pretend you're a community health educator and you need to present to the community about asthma. Make them aware of uh, what asthma is, how it occurs, what are the factors, what are the symptoms, how to treat it, and we are trying to do this in an interesting way, right? Because if you're, if you're trying to convey an idea to your community, there are ways to make it more approachable than others. So what is asthma? Find an, uh, an online source to start researching asthma. So you can uh, use a, a search engine and type in asthma overview. Use what you learned to start your thinking about this topic. People with asthma have very hypersensitive airways. And the airways can become swollen, making it very difficult to breathe. And my dad had asthma, and uh, he, he always had this inhaler. And I'm sure some of your friends also have asthma. It's a fairly common and a common uh, thing to have. And it's treatable, which is good if you get treatment for it. But you will assume the role of a community health educator. He talks about some information from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. They work to improve the health of people in local communities, uh, usually have a college degree, and it's just talking about job stuff. But this is what community health educators do. They share information, promote good health in the community. I feel like I've said that several times now, but it's, if it's not obvious enough in the name, um, but uh, there are two goals in this presentation. We want to create a model used to show the effects of asthma, and then we want to deliver information about the prevalence of and risk factors for asthma. So they need to understand trends in health data. They need to make information accessible to a wide variety of people. You don't want to just talk about this with other uh, scientists or doctors, right? You need to let everyone know in very basic terms what's going on. And a way to do that is to use multiple ways of sharing information. So some people like visual information, others like to be told, have a conversation about it. Um, and others would like some type of movement, right? So like videos or, or uh, models, physical models sometimes. And they need to share information about risk factors. So here's the driving question and the essential question driving, how can you as a community health educator share important information about asthma and its prevalence within the community? How can statistics and data about asthma be shared accurately and in a way that's interesting to a community audience? So here are the steps for this project. You need to research 
asthma and focus on these uh, smaller topics. The effects of asthma and state and local data related to the risk factors and prevalence of asthma. Step two, develop a model to show the effects of asthma and analyze data to identify trends in your state or community. And then lastly, we're going to pull all that information together, the, the research, the information, and the model, and create a presentation that uh, you would hypothetically give to the community. And here's the rubric. So as long as you aim for this four in all of the categories, the research model, analysis of data, presentation, and, and writing conventions. So try to write clearly, show that you have researched extensively, uh, create a good model, analyze the data appropriately, and then make the presentation look um, accessible, easy to understand, and you should be good to go. So part one is about learning uh, asthma statistics or risk factors, and it gives you an estimated time to work on this. We want to gather and organize information. So initially, you want to think about, all right, what's, what's happening? Uh, what body systems does asthma affect? How do body systems interact to maintain homeostasis? How might asthma affect homeostasis in the human body? And here's a picture of homeostasis. Your body wants to remain uh, stable, right? And if anything happens to your body, your body will react to regain balance in some way. So if you get too hot, your body will sweat to try to cool you down. If you're too cold, your body will start to um, try to warm yourself up. It will uh, stop circulation to your extremities and try to try to hone in on your core to maintain uh, warmth. If you're thirsty, you'll you'll uh, if you haven't had water, your body will make you feel thirsty to induce uh, you to drink water. If you're not hungry, your body will. Uh, send signals to your brain, like, hey, it's time to eat. Those are examples. Here it talks about evaluating online sources. Whenever you're researching, uh, your first go-to will likely be an online source. So you have to conduct inter internet research carefully and make sure you're using websites that are reputable, uh, they know what they're talking about, and try to stay away from conspiracy theory, strange looking websites, or websites that are trying to sell you something, and they have a bunch of ads everywhere. Not always ideal for research purposes. Evaluate the author, so look for the author's name and and check for additional information. Uh, is he from an organization that uh, deals with research or is he just some marketing guy? Uh, you, know, you have to check people's credentials. Uh, are they an expert in the field? Do they know what they're talking about? Have they been published? in peer-reviewed journals, what's going on? So be a little skeptical. And that goes for the information too. So if you can check various websites, um, and if more than one website's saying 
the same thing, the chances are the science is uh, good for the most part, right? If it's in peer-reviewed journals, um, then you should be good. And always cite sources correctly. MLA is one of the, the more popular ones. And then you also have APA, the American Psychological Association. So if you click on that link, it will tell you how to cite. And then EasyBib is also um, a way to generate a bibliography or a citation. You can click Create Citation. And then click, all right, what's the source? Website. And then you can paste the URL, www.whatever.com.org, .net, .gov. So just search here, um, or you can create a manual citation. So put in the title, the contributors, and the website title, the sponsor, when it was published, when you accessed it, and you should be good to go. Here are more tips. Um, these focus on searching the web, some phrases. Um, when you type a phrase into a search engine, they look at, um, they treat it as if each word is individual and they will not look for the, the phrase together. So if you type in rock climbing shoes, it will generate a search on the words rock, climbing, and shoes. But if you want to find the exact phrase, place the phrase inside quotation marks. So rock, climbing, shoes. Stop words. They typically ignore, search engines typically ignore words that are used to connect verbs um, with nouns. These are called stop words because they don't add meaning to the search. So after the, between, to, there, on, and you, if these words are an important part of the search, I either place the individual word inside the quotation marks or precede the word with a plus sign. So you could do um, the Great Gatsby, enter the Great Gatsby, or uh, plus the Great Gatsby. To remove a word from a search, proceed the word with a minus sign. So if you wanted to look at green vegetables that don't include lettuce, you would quotation mark green vegetables minus lettuce. So the results would show everything about green vegetables, um, but not including lettuce. Search engines can automatically fill in one or more words for a wildcard symbol. For example, entering nuclear star will result in pages containing nuclear and any other term, such as nuclear energy, nuclear power, nuclear bomb, the search engine determines the outcome. Most search engines don't distinguish between uppercase and lowercase. So daffodil, 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 um, and daffodil, all the same. Um, you can also refine a search by using base words. Base words meaning the, the most simple version 
of that word. So gardening, the base would be garden. Searching for a base word can keep irrelevant information out of a search. It's better to search on garden than on gardens, right? However, if you're interested in the hobby or science of gardening, be sure to include the, uh, the ing. Those are different. Um, autocomplete can be a helpful feature. Advanced searching. If you use the basic searches but still haven't found what you need, try the search engine's advanced search features. This can search for pages by type, date of creation, language, and even number ranges. Date of creation is useful when searching for technology that changes quickly. You may want to see results from only the last year or over the last month. And then we have operators. And, or, and not are called logical operators. One second. Okay. So, for example, boating and safety returns only websites that relate to both boating and safety. The word or will produce pages that contain both keywords as well as pages that contain either individual keyword. Electricity or magnetism will give you sites about electricity or magnetism, or electricity and mag magnetism. And the word not will remove a selected word from the search. For example, winter sports, not skiing will return only sites refer uh, referencing winter sports other than skiing. Okay, so now all that's out of the way and you know better about the search engines and how to verify online sources. Now's the time to gather the information. And these are the two subtopics. How does asthma affect the body? What is the prevalence of asthma and risk factors for asthma in your local area? This is the data you will analyze to identify trends that are relevant to your community. So the first, how does it affect the body? You'll use that to develop the model and then looking at the prevalence and risk factors, that is the data you will analyze to look for trends um, that will be relevant for your community. So here are some uh, asthma symptoms, wheezing, chest tightness, shortness of breath, coughing. Where should I start looking for answers? Start by looking at these sources. Centers for Disease Control, National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. You may find more information at other websites Make sure the sites you use for your research are reputable sources. And we do that by cross-checking and making sure the information is uh, from some peer-reviewed site, um, journal, things of that sort. Which body system does asthma primarily affect? Respiratory. We're talking about respiration. So here is where you can organize your research notes and organize it, share it with me. I'll be able to look for feedback. Or you can wait until you're done with the assignment completely. But this is the part one um, submission. Part two, model the effects of asthma. This is the model making part. So take some time to review the different types of models used in science. Remember that models include diagrams, drawings, 3D models, 
and math formula simulations. So here I would say a visual model, diagram, drawing would work perfectly. Consider which type of model would be best to demonstrate. Share the plan and type it in the answer space or go to graded activities in the toolbar over here to upload your plan for feedback. Yeah, there we go. Go to graded activities in the toolbar and upload your model for feedback. Make sure you have labeled each part of your model and then explain the limitations of your model as well. Part three, this is the trend identification part, and we're gonna analyze statistics, numbers. We're gonna crunch some numbers in this part. Part one was gathering data about the prevalence of asthma and the risk factors, and now we want to analyze that data. So what risk factors for asthma are present in your area? How do these factors compare to other areas? So we live in Oklahoma, we live in Tulsa. Um, what are some of the risk factors? Well, tell me, uh, what, what is it? Is it the amount of cars and, and environmental smog in a region? Is it uh, mold in your house, right? So what are, what are the things that can affect breathing. How does the prevalence of asthma in your city or state compare to other cities or states? Um, let me know. So compare it with Texas, you know, for a nearby neighbor, or California, New York. Um, those are some good suggestions. And, and then you can look at the prevalence of asthma over time. Is this change similar to or different from changes occurring elsewhere too? And then after looking at all this, asking these types of questions, is there a trend that you see? Is asthma getting worse in our area, faster or slower than other areas? Perhaps it's among a certain type of uh, population as well. I don't know. You got to tell me, right? This is all about your research. Um, part four is preparing the presentation. So we have the model that you drew, the diagram, the drawing. Um, and now we have the data that you researched and then you're, you analyze the data, right? You were looking for trends, like, oh, well, uh, it's actually getting worse in Tulsa. Oh, but not in rural Oklahoma. Why is that? Oh, it's, it's actually uh, occurring faster than in Kansas or something. Oh, I wonder what's up with that. Those types of questions and trends. And then we're gonna put all that together in a presentation. And the nice thing about the presentation is that most of the work is already done, right? Now you are putting it all together in an accessible, easy to digest way. And you can make it look pretty too. Um, some people love uh, making their presentations look very appealing. And to organize, you can use an outline. So we can introduce the topic, use the model to demonstrate how asthma affects individuals, present the trends, and then conclude by summarizing the information. Let's 
to hear introduce the topic, just give a brief introduction to asthma and its risk factors. Next, you want to use your model to demonstrate the effects of asthma to the audience. Be sure to explain what each part of your model represents, and then also talk about how the model isn't a perfect model. Present trends in the data based on your analysis of the data. You're going to describe some trends you found, and then offer explanations for these trends. And then in the conclusion, you're going to summarize the information and then emphasize how it relates to the community, right? So with community health, a lot of the times people are like, well, how does that affect me? I don't feel like that would affect me. That's why you really need to hammer it home that, no, no, this does affect the community. Here's the data, and, and here's what we can do about it. Right, That's not necessarily part of the presentation, and this is more informational in uh, your, your presenting information to these people. And here are tips for creating a slide presentation. You want to use a text size, a text size that is easy to read. Um, think about the presentation being um, on a big screen or their computer screen, full screen. Um, ideally, bigger is better. Um, and the less words on a screen, for the most part, is, is usually better. You want things to be simple, consistent, uh, color-coded graphs, graphics. Uh, you want it to look good, <laughs> for the most part. Um, use lists to present points. User-friendly colors, like primary colors, to make everything easy to read. Using very clear, crisp graphics can help as well. And present the information in a way that flows, in a way that feels natural. Use a minimal text and other elements to keep your slides uncluttered. So there's, there are ways to use words, sort of like this uh, PBL activity. It has words on the screen, right? But it's listed in uh, a bullet format, so it makes it a little easier to read than if it's just words on a page. And we have a graphic on the left, the title, tips for creating a slide presentation, and then a list. Um, this is a tip for creating a video presentation. And so this is what us teachers do, right? Before you start recording, we try to organize our ideas almost in a storyboard way. It doesn't always go completely smoothly, right? Some teachers are more uh, casual than others. When recording people or yourself, be aware of the background and background noise. So you don't want distractions in the background so much. And you want it to be uh, about you and your presentation. Videos can record more than just people. Uh, you can use animations, insert videos, um, put the videos in between diagrams and text. So that can break up some of the uh, slides for you and keep the audience engaged. And know your audience. So. You can make uh, videos for your friends, uh, but those will have a different tone than something you do for school or work most of the time. And here's the last 
uh, graded activity for part four, clearly explain what asthma is, include a model, include trends in the data, and then keep the audience in mind. Part five is about revising, and then we're not going to present. Your sharing of your presentation will be you submitting it to me. And then lastly, you talk about what did I learn? And this is a reflection on the task. What did you learn about being a community health educator? What information did your model convey? What did you learn about identifying trends? Um, in research, a lot of the fun is you discovering new things, and then you discovering these new things, uh, you're, you're telling it to other people um, and saving them the trouble of research sometimes. Um, what part of the presentation was the strongest? Where can you continue to grow? So what part did you think you did the best on? And then what's an area you were like, oh, this was really hard and I could do this better? And then what was the most important thing you learned? And then make a biology course uh, connection. How did you use a scientific mindset to investigate? How did you use the scientific model to explain the workings of the respiratory system and how it's affected by asthma? Um, how can you, as a community health educator, convey important information about asthma and its present uh, prevalence to the community? Well, you just did a lot of that, right? You use the scientific uh, model, you brainstormed, you researched, came up with a model to describe it, and you know, all of that part is part of the scientific process. All right, so that is it for the PBL activity asthma awareness. Thank you all, and let me know if I can help you out on other activities. Um, but until then, have a good one, and I will see you all later.